One. Right, we're starting. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, my name is Alan O'Donoghue. On Twitter, I'm Techno Teacher, T E K N O Teacher. And I'm blogging uh, Teach Computing, all one word, dot wordpress.com. Uh, Paul is video on this session. I'm going to go through it quite quickly. I'm going to try and do what I would do in an hour with a class. I'm going to try and fit it into 15 minutes. So it's a bit of a tough challenge, so we'll see how we... I might fail, but even if you fail, you still learn stuff. Um, Paul will, will give me the camera afterwards, and I'll put it on my blog. And if you want to find it, I'll put loads of links in there. If you want to ask me questions, you want to find stuff out afterwards. Um, just like a teacher, I want to help you learn how to do something. Now... I'm using a piece of software that we use in school called Scratch. Scratch is great, it's, it's like a way of pseudo-coding. You can create things very, very quickly, and you could actually create a game in 20 minutes. So the challenge is, can we do it in less than 20 minutes? What are we learning today? Right, we're going to learn how to create a simple game in Scratch. If you've never heard of Scratch, I hope that you go out of the room being inspired and you want to go and find it. Um, what else? What I'm looking for is... I want to convince you, when you walk out of this after 15 minutes, that you actually think, wow, I need to look into Scratch. Or, I'm already using Scratch, what do I need to do next? Uh, it's okay, I've finished now. I never got to plan the rest of the talk. Okay. So, yeah. so, here we go. Now, later on today, if you're interested in what I'm doing, I'm going to share with you some, an announcement. It's not a launch, it's an announcement of a competition that's going to be empowering every child in the UK with the means that they can program. It's, it's nothing to do with BBC Cold Lab. I did this hoax talk at Media City. It's, it's, it's actually come out, out of that sort of thing. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you about this later. Now, uh, first of all, I've got a little thing on the screen. I'm just going to move it out of the way. So this is Scratch. If you've never seen it before, uh, let me just hide this little viewer thing for a minute. Hide that. Okay, I hope I can find it later on. So this is the Scratch Cat. He hasn't got a name. It's just called the Scratch Cat. We're not using him today, so we're going to get rid of him. Meow. It doesn't make that noise, that was me that did that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a game, and I need a sprite. Sp game start with sprites. So what I did then, I clicked on the paintbrush, a little star for a new sprite, and I'm going to make a paddle. Okay. Now, 40 years ago, somebody came up with an idea for a game a little bit like this with a paddle and a ball. It's called Pong, and 1972. And some people say that game launched the video games industry. So how poignant, 40 years later, we're trying to teach kids how to make video games using that. So I've got a paddle. Now I'm going to click another new sprite. And this time, I'm going to create a ball. Uh, because we're working in Technicolor, I'm going to go for a different color. So we've got a ball. Okay, so now we have a paddle and we have a ball. And we can go full screen and we can see, okay, it looks a bit like a face. I could put some eyes in there later on if I wanted, but let's just come out of that. Now... Sprite, Scratch, it all works a bit like a, a movie or a play or something like that. I need to give the characters a script. I need to tell them what to do. So the first thing is I'm going to tell the paddle what to do. So I go to a control palette, and the very first thing I want when my game starts, when I click on a green flag, I want to do something. What do I want to do? Um, I want it to move somewhere. So I'm going to create a little bit of a loop so that this is going to forever do this. So what I will do, I will say, go to, no, set X the horizontal position to, I'm going to do this with my mouse, so I'm going to say go to the direction that my mouse is, the X position of the mouse. Um, I'm looking for something that says mouse X, why can I not find it? Because I'm in the wrong menu. Am I? Oh, there we are, mouse X. So now, if I click on the green flag and move my mouse, I move my mouse left, I move my mouse right, and my paddle now moves. If you want to see it full screen, look, there it goes. Alan, just get on with the talk, because I've seen that bit already. Okay. Now, the next bit, the ball doesn't do anything at the moment, so I need to make the ball do something. So I'll give the ball now some script. So the ball, at the beginning of the game, I want the ball to start in the middle, so the ball knows where to go. So I say, go to X coordinate 0, Y 0. So let's see if that works. Yeah, let me move the ball away. Click on green, and it goes back to the middle. See, look? Nothing up my sleeves, it works every time, okay? Now, not very interesting game so far, let me stop it. I want the ball to move. So, I'm going to say to the ball, forever, I want you to do something. I want you to choose a random place to go to and get there as quickly as you can. So, um, so what I'm going to say is point in a direction. So, I can say which direction to point in. And then, we're going to say move 10 steps. So, move 10 steps. So, let's start the game. Okay, and it's done that and it's stopped. Right, now, that's a problem because 
it's hit the edge, you can't see it. I want it to bounce back when it hits the edge. So this is what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm going to say forever, move 10 steps. However, if you, hit, if you hit the edge of the screen, we want you to bounce back. Now, I only came up with this idea about midnight last night for doing this talk, so bear with me a little bit. Does it work? So the ball, yes, it, it bounces. Now, sometimes the game starts, and if you're quite good at maths, you can figure out a way to, to stop that from happening. If you're not good at maths, it doesn't matter because you'll get good at maths because Scratch teaches you lots and lots of different principles. We can have different directions. Hey, why don't we go for a random number? So when it starts, it can go in any direction. So let's try this, 360 degrees. Uh, so, so, right, we go down to that corner, we bounce. Let's try another one. Okay, so it random. Now, some people will get into an argument and say it's not actually truly random, but for the purposes of the demonstration, that will do. Now, we need to get this game a bit more interesting. We need to have a way that the, you lose the game. So, what we could do is we could have it so we make a new sprite and we could have a danger zone. Danger. Mark, what's a good colour for danger? Red. You said that without moving your lips. Okay, so here we go. Oh, that's too big. Clear. This just works like a... Uh, there's a large company who make lots of software that lots of people have on their computers and they have this little painting tool and it looks a bit like that. Okay, right, danger zone. Danger zone is not very big, so I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to use the, the grow tool. Oh, that's nice and big, so now let's move it to the bottom. Yeah, that's about right. Paddle's a bit too close. Move the paddle, get up there, uh, make our danger zone a little bit bigger. Okay, somebody tell me please, how am I doing for time? How much time have I got left? About 12 minutes. 12, oh, plenty. We can do loads in 12 minutes. So now look, we've got a danger zone. And when the ball, oh, we'll start again. When the ball hits the danger zone, it just carries on going. The ball doesn't know it's a danger zone. So we have to tell the ball, when you get to the danger zone, do something. So I'll start with another green flag. Uh, and I'm going to say, forever I want you to see, are you in the danger zone? Okay, I've just noticed I'm shouting and I don't need to shout. Uh, the, 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 right, we're going to tell it to sense when we get to the danger zone. So, are we touching the danger zone? That doesn't fit in there. All these blocks, it's just like building with Lego. All the stuff just fits together. I, I've made a mistake. That's good when teachers make mistakes, because people like telling teachers when they make mistakes. They like saying, you're not the expert, I'm better than you, you shouldn't be doing this, I should be. What's he wittering on about? Uh, right, Sprite 3. So when it touches Sprite 3, what it's going to do now, it's going to stop everything. So let's test it. So, ball bounce, hit the dead. <gasps> what happened? So let's see. Forever. Uh, that should be forever, correct. Now, let's see. There's a forever There's if. A forever if. Okay. And I drag that into there. And you can see, one of the great things about Scratch, you make mistakes, it doesn't laugh at you. What you do is, you figure out how to do it again. Oh, it works. So thank you for that. Now, I, I, I need to stop the ball from getting to the danger zone. So look, I put my bat in the way. Oh, it goes right through my bat. It doesn't know my bat is to stop it getting into the danger zone. So now I need to go back. Oh, save a bit of time. Duplicate that little code block there. Scroll down a little bit. And now, if it touches sprite one, and you can name these sprites, but if I had more time, like an hour, I would be doing that. But So I don't want to do that. What I wanted to do, if it hits the bat, I want you to go back in the opposite direction. I want you to bounce off it. Now, let's see. So I'm going to tell it to point in a different direction, how will I know what direction to point it in? Well, if it's travelling in that way, and I remember doing a little bit about this in maths, so if it's travelling that way, you want to go the opposite way, I need to change it by 180 degrees. So I need to put in a little bit of maths in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in a little block in there, it's got a minus sign. Let's see, now I always forget which way around, I think it's 180 in here, 180. So we're going to do a straight line back to front. Oh, how do I know position is travelling in? Oh, I know. If I choose X direction, is that in there? X position. No EX, it's just X position. Now let's try, does it work? So, ball, bounce. Oh, didn't work. So there must be this little fault in there. It touches... Direction. Point in direction. X. Direction minus... E. Point in the direction of... Direction minus 180. You've got X position. You remove X position and put direction in the box. Ah... Yes, because the X position. Thank you. Isn't that great? I've got people here to help me. So, oh, look, it bounced off the ball. Uh, the bat. The ball bounces. The ball bounces. And just to show you that it does actually work, move it out of the way, and the game stops. Now, 
that's basically how to create a game. In... Whoa, 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 we're finished. We're finished. How much time have I got left? Five. Five minutes, right. Bit of time for some audience participation. This is called a Pico board. There are loads of different innovative stuff that come out of Scratch and all this stuff. This one's got loads of different gadgets on it. It's got a, 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 a horizontal or vertical potentiometer. It's linear. It's got a little switch. See, it makes a cool noise. I can speak into it. It's also got a light sensor. Now, it's not very light in here. So, I'm going to go for some audience participation. I'm going to call one, row one, row two, and everybody on this side, you're going to be player one. People on the last three rows over there, and people in the little cabins at the back that pretend that you're not watching, you're player two. We're going to play a game. Now, if this game works properly, it's used exactly the same principles I've just shown you. Just save that game. Uh, one thing I wish they would improve in Scratch is when you save your games, it, it's not, it doesn't make it very easy for you to, to, to do that. So, Pong, game three, save that. Now, let's see. This is what my idea was. Open a sound experiment. Now, you can connect a connect into Scratch, and you can connect lots of other stuff into Scratch. Now, let me go big screen and see if I can get this to work. I've added in sound effects, but no speakers. Now, oh, I, let's see, are we working? So, let me just test this, first of all. This game should, oh, it makes little sound effects. Try it again. Oh, you can tell I need to practice doing this. So, like, this works with, oh, it works with the mouse. Come on, work with the mouse. You've seen that bit already. Now, let's change it. This time, I'm not going to use the mouse. I'm going to use my voice instead. And some of you are probably getting tired of my voice. We'll wait to see what happens next. Okay, here we go. Hello, hello. Let's just test it. So, you can test a block. You can double-click on it. Hello. Uh, uh. Right, let's go full screen and try this game. Here we go. So, as I speak, you can see, if I go... Oh, I can adjust the sensitivity. Right, we're going to play a game in a minute with a bit of audience participation. We're going to pl try, player one, shout really loud. Yay! Right, sorry, I said shout really loud. Player one. Yay! Okay, so well, here we go. Player one, you get to go first. You meet to make sure the ball doesn't... Oh, and it will reset the score to zero. So I'll count. Player one, three, two, one, go. Yay! Yeah. Oh, try again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right, you'll get one more go, and then we'll try player two. Yeah. 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 Right, player two, you're laughing. Now, you're, gonna, you're further away, so you're going to have to shout louder. Player two. Player one, you scored two. That was your highest score. Player two. <laughs> Do we think they were rubbish? Yes. We'll try again. Player two, you need to shout really loud to get it to go right across. Try again. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Uh, right, you see, you need a bit of practice. What I'll do, when I finish this talk, I'll, I'll put it over there somewhere you can have a go. There is a way you can adjust the sensitivity on there. Right, now, turn it back to the class. What things could we do to make this game here easier or more difficult? So shout, easy or difficult. Somebody? Easy. So what can you do to make the game easier? Make the paddle larger. Okay, so let's try that. Let's try and help. You're a player too, so we'll make your paddle larger. Okay, so here we go. The talk's actually finished, but I'm just having some fun now. Let's try this. Okay, so player two, we're going to try again on three, two, one, go. Right, so somebody else, something we can do to make the game harder or easier. Somebody tell me something. What? Ball smaller. And what's that going to do? What effect will that have on the game? What effect will that have? Make it harder, okay? So we're going to shrink the ball, okay? So here we go, still with the same size bat. So player one, you're going to give this a go. Oh, full screen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. We'll try it again. Okay, maybe some other cool stuff you can do. I'll just show you very quickly. I've got a ball that looks like a ball. What I can do is I can actually import different things into here. If I can find any pictures of, oh, Jason Derulo. So. So I can go in there, I can edit Jason Derulo. Let's make his head like a ball. So I can go in there, get the eraser. 
You need a big fat eraser, get rid of loads of it first of all, get rid of all that and all of that. It's okay Jason, don't worry, you won't feel a thing. And, and I can get a smaller eraser, I can just take out some of those details there. If I had more time, I'd spend more time on this, but let's just set the costume centre, it's in the wrong place, I need to move it to there. And now let's try it with Jason Derulo's head. We go full screen. Player one, you ready? Here we go. You're going to bounce Jason Derulo's head. Three, two, one, go. Highest score. Right, give yourselves a round of applause. Can everybody do one thing for me? Put your hand up. Everybody, put your hand up. Now see if you can do this, can you bend it like that? And then a bit more, and then pat yourselves on the back. You've been a great audience, thank you very much. Okay? Are you excited or engaged about that talk? And do the talk later on this afternoon. Imagine if we gave that power to every child.